Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here. And today, we're talking about an experience that I had that is the basis of much of my advice in this game when it comes to purchasing premiums, especially your first higher tier premium. Now, to be clear, what I consider to be higher tier premiums are like tier 9 and tier 10 premium ships and reward ships. I know. Reward ships are technically not premium ships, they don't have the baked in economy, and they are essentially tier 10 premium ships, right? They just don't give them the crazy economy because at tier 10 that would just be a little much in the terms of the credit income, so they tend to skip over that when it comes to the tier 10 ships. So, a question I get asked quite a lot is, hey, I have enough coal for... A tier 9 or a tier 10 coal ship or I'm gonna buy one or I have whatever resource I need in order to pick one up what should I get well in most cases especially when it comes to like this question being asked on live stream or in the comment section of a video of course there's a usual handful of tier 9 and tier 10 uh, premium and special ships that are tossed out like Napoli Salem Kearsarge so forth and so on well, the thing is, there's a bit more to it than, oh, this ship is a very good ship, you should go ahead and pick it up. At Tier 9 and Tier 10, of course, this is the point at which you really need to know the game. You need to know the game, and more than that, you need to know your ship. And if you're just picking up any old premium ship or reward ship at Tier 9 or Tier 10, and going into that ship with zero experience in that ship type then you're going to have a terrible time. Now, Sea Lord, where's the title of this video come into play here? Right here, in fact. So, my first high-tier premium ship that wasn't the Turpits. Again, I consider, like, Tier 9 and Tier 10 to be high-tier. I did buy the Turpits. I've told that story many a times. about the Turpits when I, after, when I got to the Colorado and the American Battleship grind, and that was a terrible mistake. But a bigger mistake than that one was this one right here. I'd finally saved up enough resources to pick up a high tier reward premium ship, whatever you want to call it. And I just did a quick Google search and I searched, you know, best reward ship, premium ship, whatever. I forgot exactly what, what, what I typed in, but the, you know, I was trying to find out what high tier premium ship I should pick up for the resources I had grounded out. And at that time, the Salem it kept popping up in the results. Salem's a great premium ship, it's a premium Des Moines, it's got the super heal, yada yada yada, so forth and so on. So I thought, oh, okay, let me just go ahead and pick up the Salem then. And this is at the point in my World War ship's career, I hadn't really played much cruisers at all, let alone the American cruisers, which have a very, very, very specific play style. Now, I should have known from battleship side of things that hey these american cruisers are pretty squishy but for some reason i didn't think about that and i went ahead and i picked up the salem i forget what it was i think it was always out for coal or whatever but it was way back in the day that i picked up uh the salem but anyway so i picked up the salem and i took it into battle and good god yes it does have the super heal so that is a bit more forgiving in a lot of situations where, um, you know, you would normally get clapped in like the Des Moines, but, um, yeah, no, no, it, it was not a good experience because I, I didn't know what I was doing. And I had played a couple of heavy cruisers at this point, but again, nothing quite like the American heavy cruisers that are very much dependent upon island cover keeping their sides hidden, you know, hopping from island to island, using them as your personal shield and hugging them like your waifu, and of course using the insane shell arcs to uh, lob shells over those islands and such. And of course, too, I, I didn't know that the American heavy cruisers have the inc increased damage and the increased performance with the super heavy American AP. Didn't really know that. So, I'm here spamming HE most of the time in Salem, because it's what happened to me when I'm playing Battleship and I come in across a Des Moines or a Salem, and yeah, it's working, but I'm not really getting the most out of the ship because, well, 
I'm not using the AP really. I didn't know that, hey, when things get like 10 kilometers into you, swap over to that AP, and if they show you their broadside, you're going to chunk the ever-living crap out of them. Couple that with the reload rate, you're really going to tear them down if they don't hurry up and, you know, close the um, their angle to you. So, I didn't know that. Didn't know what I was doing. And again, too, with like the, the radar, I barely used it because, well, battleships didn't really have radar back in the day, and I kept forgetting about it, so I'm not using the, the ship to its full potential here, and I'm going into battle in a Tier 10 cruiser having no idea what I'm doing, and it's not benefiting anybody except for the enemy team that's getting my free damage at that point. So the moral of the story is, when it comes to finally deciding what you want to get at higher tier you need to do a couple of things the first one is of course grind out to said tier first if you want to get a tier 9 premium or reward ship again whatever you want to call it grind to that tier first that way you at least have an idea of what the general gameplay at that tier is like again you know no surprise tier 9 tier 10 in most cases it's quite passive airship escort has for the most part from my experience been helping give us some uh, some breaks between that, but of course, like with any mode, there's always people that are wanting to sit in the back and snipe. I mean, shoot, how many times have we gone to brawls on stream or in a video and there's some dude all the way in the back of the map trying to snipe in the game mode that's called brawls that he had to pick, you know, not like he got thrown in here randomly, but yeah, but anyway, yeah, but anyway, uh, like I was saying, you have to grind to the tier to know what that tier's like first off, right? And then... It would behoove you to pick a ship that you're used to. Like, yes, the Salem's cool, but again, if you're a battleship player, probably not the best choice. And again, like, the Paulo Emilio is pretty goofy, right? But if you never played Destroyers, eh, it may not be the best fit for you, right? And you may have an interest in the Kearsarge, but if you haven't played battleships, specifically American battleships, you're not going to really know how to play the ship overall. So you should definitely grind up in that line or a line close to that line. Like say again, you want the Kearsarge. Grind up to at least the Iowa so you have an idea of what that line's like. Because yes, the Kearsarge, it's a great ship for a premium ship looking at, you know, objectively. But, you know, looking beyond the fact that there's a giant tumor on the back of it and it has airplanes. But, like, objectively, it is a great ship. Right? So that's cool but you really need to know how to play american battleships you need to know how to aim with the slower velocities of the 45 caliber 16 inch guns because they're using the super heavy ap the shells are slower because the barrels are shorter you got to know the quirks of well really and when it comes to the cure side you should probably have some experience with cvs too but you got to know the quirks of the american armor scheme and of course also the cure sarge and the giant flight deck that you're going to get pinned through constantly so you have to Look at what you already have and decide, okay, what is going to be the best ship for me that I can get the most out of? Because, again, for most players, you know, th these are ships that it takes months and months to grind up, right? So you don't want to go and just take someone's word on the internet that hasn't had a similar experience to you in the game and just say, oh, you know, like, this ship... They said it's good. I should get it. And then you get it, and now your months and months of resources are gone, and you don't know what you're doing. So, while it is wise to seek help online, either in the comments, the Reddit, or the, rip the forums, or the, or the Discord, you know, you should also do a little bit of thinking for yourself, right? Because so many players do come to me and, and ask, like, hey, like, you know, I have enough coal, what should I get this, this, or this, or this? And, you know, it's, it's not just a simple answer. So just do a little bit of introspective thinking, right? And see what you enjoy, and then get a ship that's appropriate for that. And not even just my reviews, but there's plenty of reviews out on YouTube. There are, thankfully, Little White Mouse's uh, reviews have been preserved on the community Discord and such. So, you know, do a little bit of digging, do a little bit of research. The game, as casual as Wargaming likes to make it, there's a lot more to it than just, hey, this ship good, right? You need to know how to play it, you need to look up how it's played, you need to watch a couple of videos on how it's played, which is probably the best thing to do, really. Uh, again, not even going for my videos, not, not trying to plug them, but just look up gameplay videos of good matches in these ships and see how they're played and see, like, the, hey, 
that's the play style that I like, or I think I can get down with that, or if I have no idea how to play that this ship, I, that doesn't look like something for me, right? Like, you don't want to go get, you know, a, a Hayate, right? If you don't enjoy torpedo Japanese boats with a little bit more spice in the guns. If that's not your play, gameplay style, you don't want to pick that up. If you don't like sniping in the back of the map with a ship that's made of tissue paper, you shouldn't pick up the Azuma, right? Maybe the Agir is the cruiser that's your choice if you like more of that mid to close range engagements using AP rather than HE. So TLDR, do some digging, look back at your gameplay style, grind up to the lines that you want to get to, grind up to the tier that you want to get to, and preferably grind up to a similar line as the premium ships that you are interested in acquiring. That way, when you spend your months of resources on said ship, you've got something that you know you can do well in, and you can do what a premium ship is meant to do on it, and that is generate credits for your account, and you're not just throwing away your resources and making minimal credits because you have no idea how said ship is played. But guys, that's just a, a thought I had on my mind and a question that I get asked a lot. And, you know, I've made mistakes in this game and hopefully I can help you guys avoid making those same mistakes in this game. But anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 75,000 subscribers. Thanks to you guys, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday, wonderful rest of the week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.